It is 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, June 7th, I believe, 2024. I don't know. Maybe the 6th. No, it's the 7th. Yesterday, yesterday was the 6th. It is 80-something uh, degrees. The humidity is high. The sun is warm. And just standing here, I'm getting hotter. So, uh, behind the camera, there's a little rainstorm going on under my hat. Uh, it's pretty warm. So uh, I thought about moving them back to the beginning of the pasture. I'm just not really pleased with the regrowth at the beginning of the pasture, but at some point I think I just need to go. And uh, maybe even skip that first row. You know, but uh, I, w I went back to the corner of the field uh, yesterday evening, and um, there's a lot of green grass back there, but it's not very thick. So I wasn't very pleased with the amount of forage I have going forward. Don't get me wrong, it's plenty of forage. It should last quite a while. Uh, maybe another six weeks or so at least. But I do want it to grow stronger. Um, I looked at the, the back 20, which is over there. It goes all the way back to the back corner of my field. Um, our corners touch there. Um, and I was not happy at all with the back um, 20. Um, there, there's a spot where it was like almost all spring grass and it's completely brown and the grass has fallen over. Um, I'll show that to you when, when we get back there, if we do get back there this year. And the regrowth for the summer is not that strong. So I'm just gonna let it lay um, fallow, I guess is the word. Um, just leave it and uh, hopefully um, next year we'll get some good grass back there or I'll graze it more effectively to hopefully encourage the grass to grow more next year but I'm just going to give it a rest this year it's my backup backup so um, this area here is mostly Bermuda grass there's some of the other grass um, you can see I think that's false oat you can see that it's it's gone it's it's all yellow now um, there is a little bit of I think the Dallas grass and there's some other things too this grass here for instance that looks almost like fescue. Uh, there's no way it is fescue because fescue can't grow in these temperatures. But it almost looks like fescue. But And you can see next door that darker green stuff. If you look at it closely, let me zoom in for you. That stuff looks more like uh, Bermuda grass. And last year in this part of the pasture, we had tons and tons of thick Bermuda grass, so thick the goat weed couldn't grow and nothing else could grow either, uh, not even grasshoppers. So there's something shiny out there. I wanted to look at it. This morning uh, I traded one of my lambs, um, probably 80 or 90 pounds. I tried to wham, I couldn't. Yeah, something was sparkling out here. I don't know what it was. It looked like a metal something or other, but I guess it was just dew on the grass. So uh, this morning I traded one of my lambs for two goats. Um, the owner of the goats is kind enough to take them to the sale barn, or not the sale barn, the uh, um, uh, food locker for me. They're going to cut those up. They're really simple to cut up. Uh, they charge a lot less than they do for a cow. Um, about one-tenth of the price. For, I guess, about one-tenth of the weight. You know, that makes sense. Um, so I'll, I'm going to have some goat here very soon and we're going to have um, some goat burger which he says is better than hamburger is what he said it is. He wanted to try sheep really bad and my daughter was in his class at high school and so my daughter said well we're raising sheep you want one and he's like sure I'll trade you a goat for it and um, oh I forgot to tell you guys last night when I was looking at the sheep um, I tried to find the rams, not the rams, the weathers. They're castrated, right? And uh, lo and behold, there was two of them. Um, and I checked and double checked and triple checked. I think the reason why I got confused was the weathers, they still have teats. You know, they have little like just false teats, just fake ones. Um, but they definitely had one hole in the back end. Uh, they definitely had an organ in the middle of their belly poking out. Uh, but they didn't have any balls, so I tagged two lambs 
as ewes that were actually uh, weathers. So I'm gonna, this last one I gotta harvest him soon, probably this month or maybe early next month. Um, I'll just cut it up myself. I need to learn how to do it anyway. Um, been watching this Australian guy that uh, butchers sheep and what he does is he, he gets it started and then he uses uh, wet hands. He just like, he uses like a punching motion to separate the flesh uh, from the skin. And uh, he gets perfect skins every time. So if my skins looked that good, I would definitely want to do tanning. The problem with tanning is I need to clean the hide, um, scrape the hide. And I don't have a scraper and I don't have a post and I, I don't have an interest in doing that. But if the hides come out clean like they do for him, then, you know, maybe I'll tan one of the sheep skins, see what I get. I'm told that the uh, Dorpers have superior um, leather. It's really nice leather, so I'll play around with that some, I think. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys this morning. Um, it's hot. The sun is shining. Um, it's not, it, well, it was like perfect humidity when the sun came up, um, but right now it's not perfect humidity. And um, it should reduce in humidity by the afternoon. The problem is I come out here on top of the field and there's just so much moisture in, in the ground. And I think the plants are doing tons and tons of transpiration that uh, it's super humid out here. So, all right guys. There's a nice picture of Blackie for you. You can see her hollow and the triangle uh, on the hips there and her condition. Um, I think she's pretty average for my cows. She's smaller. She's a lot smaller than the other cows. So this might be the size of cow that I want. So guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.